Hello all. Today I shall be discussing about preauricular sinus, hematoma of the pinna, and perichondritis. These are very commonly asked questions in your final MBBS exam, maybe theory or maybe practicals, and they are very important from your day-to-day -day point of view in your clinical practice. Now let's discuss what is preauricular sinus. Preauricular sinus is a congenital small pit leading to a blinded tract that lies adjacent to the helix. Most of the times you can see a small pit in the preauricular region that is preauricular sinus. I have already told this is a congenital condition and happens due to incomplete fusion of first and second branchial arches. There are six hillocks of his. The first forms the tragus and rest of them rest part of the pinna. So when there is incomplete fusion of the first and the second hillocks of his, then there is formation of pit that is preauricular sinus. This condition is common unilaterally then bilaterally. It is more common on the left side than on the right side. Most of the congenital conditions are more common on the left side. In around 25 to 50% of cases, we may get bilateral preauricular sinus and this is more likely to be hereditary condition that is transmitted from generations to generations. The sinus is mostly asymptomatic, does not cause any problem for the patient or for the individual which is present since birth. When pinched, this might lead to sebaceous secretions from the pit. But when the sinus is repeatedly infected, then we have to excise the sinus with complete removal of the tract along with a portion of the auricular cartilage. This is important here, the excision of auricular cartilage because the sinus many of the times is attached to the ascending cross of the helix. So if the sinus wall is not removed, then there may be chance of recurrence. So small amount of ascending cross of helix is to be removed along with the sinus. You know the indication for surgery is repeated infections. Therefore, the tracks arise and follow a tortuous course sometimes in a deeper plane. So there may be chance of recurrence. Before surgery, you should explain to the patient that there is chance of recurrence. Here you can see the development of pinna from six hillocks of his. This is the first hillock which forms the tragus. The rest of them, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, they form the pinna. So when there is malunion of the first and the second hillocks of his, then there will be formation of the preauricular sinus. You can see the preauricular sinus here. This is between the tragus, this is the tragus, and ascending cross of helix. Occasionally, this pit ends in the part of the ascending cross of helix, the cartilage. Therefore, some amount of cartilage is to be removed while doing surgery. In this picture, you can see the infected preauricular sinus. This is the preauricular sinus, and the infection has gone up to this level. Therefore, the tracks go deeper up to this plane, and sometimes they may arborize, leading to recurrence after surgery. Now we shall discuss the next topic for today. This is hematoma of the pinna. This is defined as collection of blood and serum under the periquindrium of the pinna. This usually happens due to shearing forces to the auricle and pinna, which results in separation of the periquindrium from the underlying cartilage. This is commonly seen in boxers, wrestlers, judo players, and athletes when there is trauma to the lateral part of the pinna. The lateral part of the pinna is more tight in comparison to the medial part which is more lax. Therefore, when there is pressure or when there is tear on the lateral aspect of the pinna, there is shearing force and there is formation of the hematoma. The pinna seems swollen, bluish, thick and the pinna is tender on touch. Sometimes this is fluctuant. When there is fresh blood that becomes fluctuant and when there is hematoma, there may not be fluctuation also. This is the typical picture of hematoma of the pinna. This is the hematoma blood collection. You can see the pinna is swollen here with blood collection. When there is infection of the hematoma that leads to perichondritis and abscess formation, there will be thickening and cauliflower ear and the cartilage becomes necrosed. So the pinna loses its normal shape. It is very important to understand that the perichondrium provides nutrition for the cartilage. So if there is a gap between the perichondrium and the cartilage and blood is there, the cartilage does not get nutrition and the cartilage gets necrosed. How to treat this condition? The condition has to be treated with broad spectrum IV antibiotics or oral antibiotics that are sensitive to Pseudomonas and Staphylococcus because these two organisms are commonly found in the pinna. Ceftriaxone 
and ciprofloxacin can be used. This infection might lead to perichondritis and abscess formation and an increase of the cartilage. So to avoid that, we have to treat as early as possible. A wide bore needle respiration can be performed with 18 gauge needle and tight pressure has to be applied when there is fresh blood. When there is a blood clot, then we have to perform incision and drainage. And when the patient has come with infection, we have to perform debridement of the necrosis cartilage. It should be understood that when the patient comes in the stage of infection, there may be some thickening of the cartilage which will be permanent. You can see cauliflower ear here. You can see thickened pinna here. This is incision and drainage process and the bastion gauze is being applied for equal pressure on the different curvatures of the pinna. You know the outer part contains different curvatures so the gauze has to be kept equally and compression dressing is on process. The next topic for today is perichondritis which is defined as inflammation of the perichondrium of auricular cartilage. That is perichondritis of the pinna which is commonly caused by pseudomonas as I have already told. The predisposing factors are laceration of the pinna, piercing of pinna involving the cartilage. After master surgery, when the incision is made more near to the cartilage or while performing meatoplasty or otitis externa. During meatoplasty, we have to cover the cartilage, otherwise there may be perichondritis, frostbite, burns, infections of the pinna and relapsing polychondritis also may lead to perichondritis of the pinna. How does the patient present? There will be pain and swelling of the pinna, usually after some trauma or some wounds or some physical assault or insect bite. The pinna will be hot, tender and thick. The difference is from pseudocyst or from hematoma. Fluxation may or may not be present and patient may also have fever. How to treat this condition? We have to start with high dose broad spectrum IV antibiotics like ciprofloxacin, ciftriaxone, ciprotaxin, flucloxacilin, amoxiclab or ciprofloxacin. Again, we should understand that the infection may be due to staph aureus or maybe pseudomonas. Therefore, the infection might progress leading to infection and destruction of the cartilage leading to cauliflower ear. Local application of magnesium sulfate is important to reduce the edema and sometimes patient has to undergo incision and drainage of the abscess or surgical debridement of the necrosis cartilage. This condition also may lead to cauliflower ear. Thank you, thank you very much. Please subscribe my channel for more videos like this, both for the theory as well as practical examination in final MBBS and MS ENT. Thank you, thank you very much.